Hey guys, this is Conrad Bobulak, CEO of Investors Prime Real Estate and author of Australian Property Finance Made Simple. I've got a really cool video for you today called 11 Ways to Turbocharge Your Borrowing Capacity. And in fact, on this video, it won't be myself that will be speaking. I've got a guest speaker who is probably one of the top best brokers right now in Australia, specifically dealing with property investors. And it's none other than Stephen McClatchy from Loans Australia. Now, before we go into Stephen, I just want to give you a bit of background about myself. For those of you who have never heard me speak before, my name is Conrad Bobulak, as I said before. I've got a bunch of degrees behind my name. I'm a real estate agent, mortgage broker. I've got a diploma in financial planning. None of those things really give me the authority to educate you guys. What really gives me the right to educate you is the fact that I've been a very successful property investor in Melbourne for over 20 years, and I've built a large multi-million dollar property portfolio myself. I happen to be all the other things as well because along my journey, I wanted to educate myself further and get into other areas, uh, which which eventually led for me to buy more property, which is really cool. Um, also, if you want to get a copy of my book, by the way, you can get it at any good bookshop around Australia or jump onto Amazon or go into bookonfinance.com.au and get a copy right there, which will be delivered to you to your door for $32.95 plus postage and handling. Now. Without, um, without waiting any longer, I want to bring on the next guest speaker, which is a person who's been involved in the industry for over 20 years. His name is Stephen McClutchy from Loans Australia. What makes him one of the top brokers in Australia is two things. Number one, he's written nearly a billion dollars worth of loans himself in the industry, which is unheard of virtually through his company. That's a thousand million dollars worth of settled loans. That gives you a lot of experience. Number two, the company that he is a director of specializes in niches specifically in property investing and looking after property investors who want to specifically build large property portfolios. And unfortunately, what you're going to find in the industry is the majority of bro mortgage brokers won't know what to do with people who want to buy 10 properties. They don't know how to get them to 10. They, they hardly ever come across anyone with 10 properties anyway. So you've got to deal with people that actually are looking after clients currently who have property portfolios of in excess of 5, 10, even 15 properties. So please give a warm welcome to Stephen McClutchy. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Conrad. Cheers. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, we're here. Great topic today, one of my favourites actually, of how to basically turbocharge your borrowing capacity. Without doing that, you're going to be stuck on one or two properties, which we hear about all the time. They just don't know how to get that next step. So we're going to talk about this great topic today. Company disclaimer, obviously we're talking about uh, not your individual situation right now. Please come and talk to us individually about that. We can help you out. So who is Loans Australia? Well, I've been operating now for uh, about 23 years. For the whole time, we specialise in working with investors. And these are investors who want to build a portfolio of, of mortgages, what I call it, not so much property, but mortgages over that period of time. Anyone who's got sort of from two, and our largest clients got now got 105. Um, so very large portfolio. So we help these people get a mindset around how to do it, then put structures in place, then gives them tips and tricks of how to enhance their borrowing capacity over time. One of the benefits we have is that we've got um, our own ASIC license, which basically means we're not tied to a small panel of lenders. Uh, like a lot of uh, people out there, like Aussie Home Loans and so forth, they have 15 or 20 lenders, which is quite restrictive if you're an investor. Um, being under our own ASIC license, we're going to hunt out lenders, which we believe can add value to our clients. So we've got over 80 different lenders now on our panel that we utilise uh, for our clients' benefit. Um, in terms of formal education, just saying a bit about myself, uh, I've always wanted to be uh, on the top of my game, so continually throughout my career I've always undertaken courses or trainings um, over, over the last 25 years of being in business. Um, what you'll also see there is I am a fellow of the Financial Services Institute of Australasia, uh, which is a very well-renowned uh, institution, and we keep that and we held that in high regard. Um, in terms of what we've been doing, we are an SMSF specialist. A lot of our clients do like lending and building their wealth via an SMSF or a self-managed super fund. Uh, so we do do a lot of that style of lending. We do that in conjunction with accountants and financial planners who have to overlay the advice and we come in with the uh, lending advice in that area. Um, as Conrad said, we've settled a lot of loans over a lot of period of time. And what that gives us is a lot of experience. A lot of our clients have, have done things differently. They have different strategies out there in property. So we've had to tailor finance solutions to those different strategies. So I don't think, I haven't seen too many new strategies over the last few years 
generally they're recycled ones from over the last 20 or 30 years and, and, and so forth. So uh, certainly we've got a very wide degree of experience in helping people really maximise their ability to borrow money uh, further. Uh, I love uh, educating and talking to people about finance. We've done that in multiple countries now in a whole different uh, bunch of areas. So that's, that's something we really want to do with our clients, help educate them, give them the confidence that they can move forward. And there are options out there because banks are very quick to say no and they're also not very quick to actually tell you what you need to do to change your position to get you into that next property. But we're going to do that right now for you. So 11 ways to turbocharge your borrowing capacity. Number one is a lot of people lend just through the major banks. You know, and if you do that, you're going to reach your maximum exposure level very quickly with those banks. In Australia at the moment, the big four banks have about 85% of the total market share in lending. Now in Australia, you might not be aware of this, but there's over 400 different lenders in Australia. So think of this, if four banks have got 85% of the market, over 400 other institutions are fighting for 15% of the market, which is not much. So what that means to me is they have to be competitive somehow, whether that's in pricing, policies, procedures, somehow they've got to have that competitive edge to actually stay in business. So keep an open mind as to what you're doing and who you're doing it with because you might be holding yourself back. So number two, you've got to consider lenders who have something called a risk fee. Because out there, there's a common terminology called mortgage insurance. So if you're borrowing over 80% of the value of the property, which a lot of investors want to do, because it's hard to save your way to wealth, you've got to leverage your way to wealth. So these insurers out there have caps on how much they'll lend you. And these caps are pretty small. In the most parts, around one and a half million dollars cap per mortgage insurer and there's not many insurers if you stick with the major banks there's only a few different ones there but these days some of the smaller lenders now have their own insurers which are different so out there once you've reached your exposure level with the insurers there's other lenders out there who have things called risk fees so instead of insuring the loan they take the risk on board and they charge a client a similar fee to a mortgage insurance in a lot of cases actually cheaper so just keep that open mind about those sorts of lenders as well uh, number three, each lender applies a benchmark or a buffer rate to how much you can borrow. So a lot of people come to me and say, oh look, I went on an online calculator, interest rate was 4.5%, I worked out I can afford repayments easily, I should be right. What they don't realise is the banks are putting a, a buffer or an interest rate on top of the actual interest rate to work out whether you can afford the loan. So if the interest rate they're charging is 4.5%, they might charge you 7% or 8% in working out if you can afford that loan. So if you've got two or three other loans and they're working those out at seven and a half or eight percent as well on a principal interest basis over 30 years, even though you might be paying interest only, and these days some banks are, getting, are even saying that if you've only got 10 years to go on your mortgage, they're working out over 10 years, not over a 30 year period that we can have now. So that can really stifle your borrowing. So if you're having these high buffer rates on there, everything's on principal interest over 30 years or even less a lesser period of time, that can really hold you back from borrowing. So you need to be aware of that and work out how you can combat that because there are ways to, to combat that. Not all lenders are doing the same buffer or um, servicing rates. So just be aware of that out there. Step four in ways to turbocharge your borrowing capacity. One of the biggest things that lenders look at and treat differently is your income. These days, people don't earn income the same way. You're not in the same job for 20 or 30 years. People are earning income in a variety of ways from permanent full-time to part-time to casual to commissions, overtime. Uh, people are getting short-term employment these days. Uh, a lot of people are moving to Airbnb uh, rental income instead of standard rental income. People might receive maintenance payments, Centrelink payments, uh, payments from superannuation, salary packaging. I could go on and on. There's so many ways you earn your income. And believe it or not, the banks actually treat those ways differently. So some lenders will include 100% of your bonus that you have coming in. Some will include 100% of your commission. But if that commission is earned yearly instead of monthly or quarterly, some lenders won't include any of it. Now the issue we have with clients is that there's no one piece of software out there, even though mortgage brokers might tell you this, there's no one piece of software that, that people can type in your details exactly and get the very accurate borrowing capacity because there's no software built to take into account all these different permutations. So unless your broker or your bank actually understands how the formulas, the lending formulas are put together, they don't really have a clue how to maximise your actual borrowing capacity. 
I'm lucky in a part because I started doing this lending and borrowing capacity well before these softwares came out. So we know what goes into the borrowing capacity and what we can utilise and how we can move around to maximise your position per lender. And that's a very important thing to do. And you've got to also remember that some lenders aren't on softwares. They're just direct to the customer or direct to the borrower. So that way they actually have to hand write out what actually is going on with that particular lender, which can be uh, difficult for some uh, mortgage brokers out there. So again, lots of ways of earning your income, uh, especially self-employed is even trickier because some banks want to look at two years worth of self-employment. If one year is, let's say the most current year is up 100% on the year before, a lot of banks will only actually take a 20% growth in working out your borrowing capacity. Whereas other lenders will look at your just most recent year income and take that. So there's lots of ways of working it out. So you really need to have an understanding and an awareness that that is the case to make sure you know the person looking after you is maximising your position. Now, as well as income, number five is around expenses. Uh, and banks treat your expenses very differently. These days, if you haven't got a loan for a while, what you'll be surprised is that the mortgage broker or bank is going to ask you a series of questions about what you actually spend your money on. For some of you, that will be a rude shock and you know, they think a breach of privacy, but actually APRA and the government want people to have a better understanding and banks have a better understanding of what you're spending your money on. So that has a massive impact on your borrowing capacity. We had a client the other day who said they spent 9,000 a month on their living costs. Now, that meant that they couldn't afford their next property because they were spending so much money on lifestyle. So they had a hard decision to make whether they're going to trim their lifestyle to borrow the next property or just continue their lifestyle. And that's a question you may face as well. If a bank comes to you and knocks you back for a loan and says you can't, you can't borrow any more money, then realistically you've got to look at your income and you've got to look at your expenses. They're the first starting points you've got to look at. So when we talk to clients, we break it down. We work out what we can move or change around or give you ideas of how to enhance that borrowing capacity straight away. As you can see from the slide, we've given you lots of ideas about living expenses and what they're looking for. And the banks have certain minimums you have to, uh, you have to uh, meet as well in terms of that. Very important. Number six, um, a lot of people look at splitting your liabilities with your partner. And so what we're talking about there is that when a bank looks at how much you can borrow, if you own 50% of a property uh, with someone else, the banks will actually say, OK, you're liable for the full debt. So they'll include 100% of that liability, but only your share of the rent. So that can certainly hold you back from borrowing. And look, 98% of lenders all out there adopt that policy. There are only a couple of lenders out there that if we can prove that your partner in that property has income to meet their obligations on their portion, then we don't need to include their portion in your serviceability. And if you've had a few partnerships on properties, that can have a massive impact on in your ability to borrow but we have to be able to prove the other person has an income and, and can service their debt, which is important. Uh, number seven, uh, you could apply for a loan in one individual's name. And we like to do that a lot. So instead of having both husband and wife or partners on one loan all the time, that could actually hold back your ability to overall borrowing capacity for the whole family. So we look at breaking it down between the individuals. We even look at ownership percentages between the individuals, because that can have an ability to maximise your borrowing by lending more in one name than the other name. And that impacts on depending on how much income both of you are declaring as well. So it's getting a bit nitty gritty, but these are the depths we need to go to sometimes to get that person into their next one or two properties. We nearly need to break it down what ownership percentages are and the structure of the ownership as well. And we like to try and keep all the lending with one person initially and try and maximise that and then move on to the other person as well. And we actually have had some success by doing that also that we haven't been able to include the living expenses for that second person um, if we can show they do have some income to meet that, which again is a little a 1% of there to help you borrow more money. In number eight, a lot of our clients out there have a strategy of renting where they live and just buying investment properties. Now, depending on where you rent, the amount that you're paying in rent, we have to include as an expense in your borrowing capacity. So what we like to try and do is dovetail that into the last principle, whereby we have the rental a lease in the name of the person who's not going to be on title to the property, ideally. By doing that, we don't need to include the rent. Um, some lenders now are having a notional rent we need to include, but if we can prove that the other person is paying the rent and they have some income, then we're fine. We can get away with that. And that really has a big impact. Because if you're paying two, three, five, six thousand a month in, in uh, repayments on your rent or rental, 
that can really impact buying that next property. So we're looking at all these little bits and pieces for you. Number nine, we like to look outside of just the residential part of the bank. Most mortgage brokers are only qualified to deal with the residential part of the bank, not other parts of the bank. But you really need to look at that because these other parts of the bank have different policies and procedures and different ways of working out your borrowing capacity. And some, if you're building a portfolio in a company or trust structure, then we can actually isolate a lot of the time you're lending to that structure. So that structure is developed so that it has enough income coming in to meet the requirements of the loans, then we don't need to take into account outside liabilities. Not all lenders have that, but some particular lenders do. So structure is really important in borrowing capacity as, you, as you're moving forward. Um, one of the best parts of bank we like is private bank because they have a bit more, um, they take a more thorough understanding of their clients to really get down, work out what they're doing. They're working with growth clients who want to grow. And so in private bank, because clients we can get there generally have a bit bigger income and propensity to grow, the banks have a little bit looser a criteria and they'll lend them a bit more money than other parts of the bank. So we try and get clients there as they move along and, and build their portfolio. Number 10, we also look at other lenders who have different ways of calculating your servicing. So we have some commercial lenders. I know it's going to sound funny, but sometimes we lose, use commercial lenders for investing in residential investment properties under companies and trusts because they look at the debt based on the interest that you're paying and making sure you have enough income coming in to cover the interest on the loan. That's very unlike the residential part of the bank who takes into account a whole host of other things as well. But in the commercial sphere, they take a more business pragmatic way of working out your borrowing. So we do look at that for clients to enhance their borrowing to move forward as well under that scenario. Um, one of the biggest things we wanna look at, and I have talked about this a bit before, is the percentage ownership split um, into what percentage is one partner to the other, because that does affect your borrowing capacity. And we also look at things like lending within your self-managed super fund if that's possible and what that means to you because that might mean you can't borrow any more potentially in your own name but you could borrow more potentially in a, in a super fund structure or maybe in companies and trusts as well so we look at all the gambit of ideas for you of how to do that a couple of little bonuses i'll throw in there while we're doing this video and number one is what people don't realize is that if you're getting an interest only loan you can actually borrow less than if you're getting a principal interest loan that's because the banks these days are working out your borrowing repayments on how much years you've got to pay your loan off. So if you took a 30 year loan and first five years of interest only, you've only got 25 year, uh, years left to pay it off. So the banks work out your repayments over the 25 years. Whereas if it was P&I, they work it out over the 30 years length of the loan so you can borrow more money. So sometimes what we can look at is trying to start the loan under a P&I basis and then down the track six months or more, we do an internal switch to an interest only loan at that time. Um, to, you know, they won't then change and review our borrowing structure at that time. So it just means you can borrow a little bit more up front because you don't know what's going to change with the banks as you move forward. Sneaky bonus number two, what we always want to do is we want to do an upfront credit check because sometimes people don't realise that things on their credit report can actually affect their ability to borrow. And what we don't want to do is go and apply for loans and be knocked back by a bank and have a bad credit mark because we're getting some negative credit reporting coming into Australia. That means they, the banks are gonna know everything about you and what you're doing. And we don't want you to have these negative marks in your credit report. We wanna have your score as high as possible so you can borrow as much as you can at the cheapest rate possible. And there's some really handy tips and the methodology we use to go through with our clients to work out how we can break down your position and show you how you can borrow as much as you can. What I'm gonna do now is hand you back to Conrad um, he'll finish off the video. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Steve McClatchy from Loans Australia, the multiple property experts. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Cheers. Great information there, guys. Uh, 11 ways you can turbocharge your borrowing capacity. And this is a very important topic. You know, the amount of emails that I get from people saying, I'm priced out of the market or I can't afford the property that I really want. Well, just one of these things could potentially boost your borrowing capacity. It could be in the difference between you getting the property that you truly want or the property that you can just afford to get. So once again, great information. So let me ask you a question. Would you like to learn more? If the answer is yes, then I invite you to attend and spend two days with myself and Stephen McClutchy and Cameron Fisher from Changing Places Real Estate <coughs> and Stephen Molnar at an up and coming real estate investing fast track weekend. This is an amazing event that we run about 10 times a year. It's a very exclusive event, limited to only 40 seats per event. 
Um, and, you know, people have been fly flying in from all around Australia to attend these events. Even internationally, we've had people come in from places like Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, as far as South Africa. It's pure content and information, purely designed to educate you guys on how to build structure, a large property portfolio that eventually will create financial independence in your life and give you that security that you truly deserve. It's right here in St Kilda, in our head office, right literally in my seminar room behind this wall. Um, it's two days of pure contents, and the best thing about this is there is nothing you can buy at the event, there's nothing you can sign at the event, it's pure education and contents. So if you are interested in attending, reserve your seats right now, just scroll down below, <coughs> click the button, and I'll see you at the event. The event is structured into two days. The first day is pure contents and education in a classroom environment, and it's predominantly about finance and structuring your property portfolio correctly. Um, day number two, we take you out of the classroom environment, put you on the bus, and we drive you around Melbourne and show you the best areas to invest in and the areas you should avoid investing in and areas that have kind of had their growth already in this property cycle and probably not the best time to buy those properties or those areas right now. So amazing two-day event. Also, if you're interested in buying my book, um, you can get it at any good bookshop around Australia at <coughs> amazon.com.au, um, excuse me, and also bookonfinance.com.au as well. As a special bonus, guys, just for sticking with me and Stephen to the very end of this video, I want to give you a free gift with $497, which is an online home study, which is a recording of the Real Estate Investing Fast Track Weekend from three years ago. Now, yes, the market has moved and some of the policies in lending have shifted, um, but it's still very current information and uh, it's 10 hours of viewing, plus you get a manual, a 365 page manual, super user friendly to use. It's literally point and click and download the manual. So don't have to be scared that you've got to be some kind of a Microsoft certified engineer to actually access this home study. Um, and once again, it's absolutely free, no strings attached, nothing to buy, nothing to sign. You can just click on below, register your details and you're watching it within seconds. <coughs> <coughs> So instant access to that as well, plus the 265-page manual. And that's about it from me, guys. It's been a pleasure having you at this video. Stay tuned for future videos on different topics. This is Conrad Bobby Lake signing out, and I'll see you on the inside.